<laughs> What's up, people? I am back for another video. So, we're doing another random review today. A movie we haven't, uh, I, I haven't watched in, I think, almost two years. So, I rewatched it recently, uh, 30 Days a Night. 30 Days a Night is about, a, uh, basically... A town in, in uh, the town's name is Barrow, Alaska, gets, you know, the annual 30 days a night where there's, there's no sun, and then basically vampires start killing people. You have Josh Hart in it. Um, I think he's probably the biggest name in this movie. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anyone else. Yeah, a lot of the other actors in this movie are kind of small. I think there's one guy I recognized from, uh, if you, ironically, because of the Power Rangers. He was in Ninja Storm. I think he was the red one. That's the one. He's the only other guy I really recognize. I think Josh Hartnett's pretty much the biggest name in this movie. Which is fine. I think everyone had their roles. <laughs> and I think, to me, this is my favorite vampire movie. You know, I get everyone loves Lost Boys, Blade. But for me, I love the more horror, violent vampires. Where they're portrayed... Like, yeah, they're humanoid. Like, they look like humans. Oh, and the one guy who played, never mind, I think the one guy who played Marlo, Danny Huston, you know him as uh, Sabretooth, and even though not a lot of people love this movie, X-Men Origins, he was actually really good as Striker. I thought he was amazing in this movie, as the leader of the vampires. And I like that they can talk, but they showed that very little, because they wanted to, um, I bet you they wanted to sh show him, um, they wanted to show the vampires as more monsters that's why they only a few scenes you see them actually talk <clears throat> and when they talk it's in like their like tongue or whatever um the cinematography is awesome i think that's like one of the best things about this film is the cinematography is amazing especially like when the scene like when it starts really snowing like there's one scene where it just like becomes a snowstorm i think this film portrays it like Oh my god, they, they portray it awesome. This film was directed by uh, David Slade. Let's see if he's directed anything else I've seen. Uh, oh, he did Breaking Bad. So not a lot of stuff I've seen. But um, <clears throat> I think this film is awesome. So let's uh, get started. All right. So you, <coughs> it st starts off, we're introduced to Eben, played by a, <coughs> Eben, um, sh <coughs> played by Josh Hartman. I think this is his best film. Uh, um, then I probably after that would be the, the faculty, but I thought he was really awesome in this film. <coughs> As the sheriff in town, him and his wife, Stella, who's estranged. Stella, who's about to leave town before the 30 days, and it starts off very slow, like, you know, everybody's getting ready to go, trying to get to the airport, because there's all gonna be sun for 30 days, which just, I would, that would be, I would be interesting to live in. I think it would suck, but that would just be, like, just to live in for a second, just, like, actual 30 days without sun, that would be interesting. And then, um, then we see, um, dogs just get randomly get stabbed very violent film too like this film is violent as fuck like that's one of this thing too like if you're not into violence you're not gonna like this movie because this movie there's just some scenes man the dog scene there's one and then there's one i'm gonna get to um so it starts off very slow but it turns out stella is um she made it too late to the airport so she can't leave so she's stuck there for 30 days so she has to basically go with that and it turns out um a stranger um sabotages the the what he sabotages the power but then he gets arrested by a shit and then slowly like now we're kind of seeing what's actually happening you just the vampires show up and it, the way they do it just in this opening scene is fucking amazing like very slow you see them, like, creaking around, and then when they grab people, it's, like, through the shadows, so you don't see them. So you almost, like, don't know what's going on. It's fucking crazy. It's, like, very slow building, and then obviously the vampires start killing people. 
Um, and then basically forcing uh, everybody else to hide in like an attic. Um, for, and then basically throughout the film, you just see the vampires just killing people, taking over the town. There's one scene, man, that's really awesome. Like, 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 I, like I was thinking about this earlier, like while I was watching it, the escalation that happens. Sorry, loud ass fucking play. But yeah, like the escalation, like, like, cause they start off very like sneaking around and like killing people like quietly, like just very quiet. Not, and I will admit the guy who played the stranger did a good job of like setting the scene of like, oh, they're coming. Cause he, he's that character for this movie, at least for that portion of the film. So Eben has also has a younger brother named Josh. I thought um, their, their scenes together were pretty good, even though they didn't have a lot, but you know, and that scene, like he sets the scene and then, like I said, the escalation where like the vampires, yeah, they're sneaking around and then the one scene where they just let loose and they start just fucking killing people. Because, like, what happens is they break in this couple's house, they kill him, and then, um, Marlo fucking uses his finger as, like, the thing for, um, a record player, screech it, almost like letting out a, they, you know what it is like? I kind of, comparing it, to, if you remember, you know I'm a Jurassic Park fan, so, like, the Raptors, how they have their own, like, little communication calls, it's very much like that, you have a little bit of that here, and I fucking love it. Like, they, the vampire's almost like an animal. Like, I fucking, like... Because we haven't... Especially at that point, you can kind of see it a little bit in Underworld, but Underworld, they are more human. Like, they have, like... Obviously, they're not full-on human, but they have, like, sort of similarities slightly. Like, whereas in this, they're just pure animalistic. So he lets out this screech, and this is where, like, all the vampires just fucking let loose or just... Like, you're getting this aerial view of these vampires just murking people. It's very... This film is violent as fuck. Like, oh my god, that was insane. Just seeing the vampires just... Like, let loose was just crazy. Because it, like, they started off just sneaking around, trying not to be seen, and then just, fuck it, let loose. And then they find, um... The guy who, pretty much it turns out, he's probably the one who killed the dogs. And, uh, is the one... Who wanted... Because he wants to become a vampire, but they didn't want to... So, they acted like they were going to turn him, and then basically, Marlo kills him by snapping his neck. Didn't even bite him. And then, uh... So, 18 days later, which... Interest, I didn't even know that. But, yeah. So, 18 days later... That's kind of crazy how this film goes by days go by. It doesn't feel it, but yeah. So, now, like, a giant blizzard hits... Eben decides he's going to use himself as a diversion to destroy, so the other group can get out. And then, like, you know, you have a little bit of a scene where they're freaking out because vampires are searching house to house. And it does, and the guy does have a point, like, it's not, do you really want to just stay here while, while there's vampires? They're going to eventually just find you. So Eben decides, all right, we're going to, he'll be the distraction while so he runs outside you know starts making noise and stuff but then because the vampires chase him to his grandmother's house who his grandmother there's a scene where um they jo he finds josh's weed stash it turns out his grandma grows weed you know medicinally and it, she he uses one of her lights to fucking flash one of the vampires and then uh Yeah, in terms, he pretty much his love, like, like there is that you get a little bit, of, like, because um the vamp the female vampire that's with him, I guess that's like his lover. He uses ultraviolet rays and she's like burning, and he has no choice but to kill her. And then um, the town snowplow dr driver Bo, who you see has like this giant like bulldozer with like fucking like a giant chainsaw. <laughs> it's fucking crazy. It is like some Mad Max shit. So he k comes out and basically is like the distraction. Very cool scene, just him killing vampires. He has like a shotgun. He shoots one of them into the fucking chainsaw. It's fucking insane. But 
he tries to blow himself up, but Marlo ends up killing him and just stomping his head. Oh, there's one scene. They go to the store. They go to the store, and they get attacked by this little girl vampire, man. It, she kills one of them, and my god, it's a pretty brutal scene, and it's a sad scene, too, because Josh has no choice but to kill her. He decapitates her. And it's like, he did the right thing, but it's like, you do, that movie did, watching it again, because, you know, I watched him, anytime I watch it normally, I was just like, fucking vampires kill people. But that, that scene did make me think about, like, imagine, if, put yourself in that scene. Yes, you did the right thing, but you killed a little girl. That's gonna always haunt you. Doesn't matter if, you know, obviously it was right, and at the end of the day, it had to be done. But still, it's very like, man, just put yourself in that situation. So, so Eben kills his friend, has to kill his friend Carter because he turns into a vampire. A few weeks later, Stella and Eben find uh, the deputy Billy, who you saw earlier in the film who was the one driving Stella to the airport. He finds them, but it turns out he killed his family to save them from becoming a vampire. It's very dark. Like, there's a lot of dark stuff. Like, it's the same thing with zombie movies a little bit. Like, there is that aspect. Like, what if one of your own gets turned and you have no choice but to kill him? And it's like, you don't want to do that. But it is like, you gotta survive. It's, like, it does make you think about that. Like, holy so, they take him to the power plant, the power station. They, um, Stella ends up getting, um, separated and finds a little, a little girl named Gail. And, my God, the scene where she finds her, she's just covered in blood. Just, it's like she's seen some shit. This film is dark. Like, it is very dark. I, I didn't, I did not, I mean, I know it's violent. But it's not just violent. There's a lot of dark kind of stories in this film. Like, a lot more than I'm like, holy shit. This isn't just some vampire kill movie. There's actually a lot of deep, like, stories. Like, yeah, what if you did have to kill a loved one? What if you're forced to kill a little girl who turns into a vampire? Just, what if you're forced to kill somebody you know, like your best friend or your wife, who turned? It's like, shit like that. It's like, man... <laughs> it's ugh. and like I said the cinematography is <coughs> it's top notch bro like the the scenes where <coughs> you're just seeing the snow the shot the shots where it's just snowing or when the blizzard hit <clears throat> it, even though it's summer here, it, I was watching it earlier, I'm like, man, I'm kind of feeling like, man, it, that movie, in a way, it's like The Thing, where if, even though you could watch The Thing, like, if I could watch The Thing today, and it's hot as fuck here, and I could feel like I'm, I'm feeling cold. I think this movie does a good job of portraying the cold to where it's almost like you feel cold, even though it could be hot as fuck. And I think this movie does a good job. So... So Billy has to kill, uh, e Eben has to kill Billy because, uh, he's about to turn, so he kills him. And then, uh, the sun's about to rise, so the vampires decide they're gonna burn the town. And then, uh, so Stella is trapped under a thing with a little girl. Bill, Eben decides the only other, the last option is he has to turn into a vampire to try to stop them and is it, it kind of is stupid i feel like they could have figured something else out but i understood i understand they felt like maybe he had to become one of them to to stop them and he realized you still have a little bit of yourself for a little bit before you turn so him and marl he injects himself with billy's blood confronts marlo we have a cool kind of final fight a lot of scratch. Oh, there. Oh, there's one scene I should fucking mention. There's one scene where they're in the the um the attic, right? And they're looking outside. They see this girl, this woman. She's screaming like help. But 
and they want to help her, but it's like you realize they're using her as bait because there's like a vampire behind her. They're using her as bait to lure people out. And it's like you want to help, but it is like a lot of moral stuff like that. Should you help her? Should you not? And then obviously they don't help her. The vampires get her, and there's like this scene where it's almost like like a gang ritual where they're not just killing her like immediately. They're like slicing her one by one. It's very fucking brutal. And then they finally eat her. But now back to the final fight. Very cool with the flames in the background. Uh, Marlo's kind of whipping his ass for a bit, but then he finally kills... Marlo gets killed by uh, his head getting punched through. Eben and uh, Stella go off to watch the sun together. They kiss one last time, and then he, like, dies. Because he turns to ash. Very dark ending, too. You know? Yeah, he, he beat the vampires, but... The fucking... Um... The sun just... It, like, that dark ending, you know? Because they were clearly set... It almost like they're setting them up to get back together, because they were estranged initially. She mentioned, oh, maybe it was a good idea not to have kids. Like... You get a little bit of that background, but this is just a one for me. This is a one. I know there's a sequel, but it's some low rent shit. And eh. I think honestly, this movie works as a one off anyway. So it's an, this is a phenomenal film. A lot of like moral questions. I didn't even think never like what, oh maybe it's just today I just noticed it, but because I had watched this film for so long, but maybe I just watched it as like a. Oh, it's a vampire kill a movie. But honestly, dude, there's a lot of moral questions. Like, imagine you had to kill one of your loved ones. Or you had to kill a little girl. And yeah, you did the right thing. She's a zombie. You, you're not a zombie, but a vampire. You did the right thing. But it is like, my God, you killed a little girl. You're never going to, like, live with that. You know, Stella having to lose her husband. You know, he did the right thing. But and he ended up losing his life for it. And then... His brother. It's such a ugh, such a good film. I, I get some people would probably say the criticism would be where did the vampires come from, but I also am like, who cares? I, I don't... I think they... I actually think it was a good idea. I like it they didn't go into where they came from. I think that would have overcomplicated the movie. They have 30 days. They're isolated. I love isolation film. That's why I love The Thing. I mean, Jurassic Park, in a sense, is almost an isolation film because you're isolated on the island for the most part. But that's why I like those type of movies, because you're, especially in a snow. You have that added snow. This is 30 days. It, it doesn't... I think they did a good job, even though it's only an hour and 53 minutes, of making it feel like it's been 30 days, even though it's only an hour and 50... So not even two hours. So I love this film. I would give this film a 9.5 out of 10. I fucking love it. Actually, I borderline might want to give it a 10. I think it's awesome. I personally don't have any criticism. I thought it was awesome. I like that they didn't go into where the vampires came from. I like, though, they're here. You got to deal with them. You got the snow setting. It's such a... Uh, the, the, the fucking cinematography. The atmosphere. The score wasn't amazing, but, you know, that's whatever. Not every film needs an amazing score all the time. I think the story itself carried the film enough. It didn't need an amazing score. So yeah, 9.5 out of 10. Definitely would watch it again. Watch it around Halloween. If you want just a kick-ass vampire flick, watch it. But I also would say, there's a lot of like moral kind of questions in this movie where it does make you think about it. It's not just like a dumb vampire movie. There's actually some lore, not lore, but like some just questions. And I fucking love it. That's what makes a great film so probably my favorite vampire movie then obviously would be played afterwards but yeah just a vampire movie in the sense where vampires are a menace and they're fucking shit up this this is it for me this is the be all end all for me i love how the vampires like i said are portrayed are very animalistic there's only a few scenes where you see marlo talk and he's like the only one who talks they don't have them all talk like, I like that. Like, where the other ones are just more as... They're literally just monsters. And I like their design. They look simple. They look human, but they still look almost animalistic at the same time. So I fucking love this film. But other than that... Um, tomorrow we will talk about why I don't like what they did with Starro and the Suicide Squad. I'll probably do the 
bands I love on Twisted Sister. <laughs> and then Friday, I'll, fi- I'll think about what video I'll do Thursday, but Friday, it's going to be a Jason-related video, because Friday's Friday the 13th, so. But, uh, cheers. But, uh, <coughs> as usual, <coughs> fuck Warner Brothers, fuck Disney, <coughs> fuck LeBron, Fuck Kevin James. <coughs> Kevin Smith. Sorry, I keep saying fuck Kevin James. Sorry, Kevin James. Fuck Kevin Smith. <coughs> um, fuck. Um, and uh, fuck James Mangold. And uh, yeah. But uh, I'll talk to y'all tomorrow. Uh, 30 Days Nights and Awesome Flick. Flick. Watch it. But yeah, talk to y'all tomorrow. Peace.